Welcome to chapter five. In this chapter, we're gonna take a look at Blender's animation tools. Blender has a pretty full set of animation tools that'll fit most animators' needs. In this first video, I'm gonna give you a run through of, the, of Blender's different animation editors and how to use them real quick. So using this sample file here that was animated by Bjorn Lennard through, our, or through CG Cookie's Animation Fundamentals DVD, we can take a look and see that we have a custom layout here. We've got our 3D viewport with our characters and such up at the top. Uh, we have a properties panel over on the right side, which has some custom tools added uh, that are from this rig that I'll talk about a little bit more uh, in one of the next videos. But basically, Blender allows full Python integration to write custom scripts for your rigs, and that's what you're seeing here. We've got the outliner on the right side, then our properties panel, and then below that we have our dope sheet or keyframe editor, and then we have the timeline down below uh, showing all of the keyframes via the yellow lines that of our currently selected object, along with then our playback and animation controls down at the bottom. So you can see our frame range from start to end, the current frame that we're on, our actual playback controls, whether to sync or not, uh, a record button, and so on. So let's take a look at this a little bit further and look at each of the different editors. So first of all, if you open up a editor type here, you can see that we have a timeline, a graph editor, the dope sheet, and the NLA editor. And these are all of our different animation editors. Now there's actually one more that's buried kind of inside the dope sheet of sorts, uh, but we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, and the first one, obviously we have our timeline for doing exactly what it sounds like. Uh, all of our animation editors allow us to scrub through just by left click and dragging. So this is in the dope sheet, in the timeline, etc. If we switch this over to the graph editor, we can see all of our animation curves. Now, obviously nothing is showing at the moment, and this is because we have this button down here, which allows us to filter by the selected. And currently, my rig is selected, but we're in object mode rather than pose mode. Now, we'll look at this here in one of the next videos, but if you wanted to see the actual animation on any one of the poses, you would need to go into pose mode. But for the time being, let's just disable that, and we can now see all of our animation curves. First off, you can adjust the zoom and scale of this view by first panning with middle click and drag. And then if you hold down control, middle click and drag, dragging to the left and right will allow you to stretch the view out and or stretch the view sideways, dragging up and down will allow you to stretch it up and down. So it allows you to very quickly adjust how you want your, your view so that you can really get in and focus on the curve that you need. Next on the left side, you can see a breakdown of all of our uh, animation channels, basically. So first of all, we have our Clive, which is the character's name, and it's the rig. And then we have the action that we're currently working on. As you can see, if we switch back to the dope sheet, you can see that we're currently set to the action editor mode. And the dope sheet is actually the default view, which just shows our keyframes. If we switch to the action editor, this then allows us to basically create all of our different animations. And so it's essentially the same view, but this one gives us access to each of the different cycles that we have. So maybe our a walk cycle, a run cycle, or whatever those animations may be, allowing you to then switch in and out of these. So going back to the graph editor though, we can see each of the different bones that are within this rig, such as the head, the ribs, torso, and so on. If we toggle this arrow down, we can see each of the channels for that bone that are currently visible. If we select one of those channels just by left clicking, it will highlight the curve in the 3D in the view. Now, obviously it can be a little difficult to see here, but basically you can see that uh, dull colors represent unselected curves, bright colors represent the selected ones. If you want to hide a specific curve, such as maybe we don't want to see this one, you can just press the eye icon or the eye icon on the bone will hide all of those channels. If you want to mute the effects of one, you can simply click the, cur or the, the speaker icon for muting. And then if you want to lock it, you have the padlock icon, fairly straightforward. So these are all of our different ones here. Uh, we can also just toggle all of that down and we can see our different rigs. We've got the tail rig and the character rig. Uh, that's the graph editor. We do have a few more things in here. If we bring up our properties panel on the right side, we can see view properties, active F curve, and modifiers. So we can add in uh, cyclic modifiers, envelopes, 
generators, noise, etc. for any kind of procedural effects that you want to add or for cy cycling and animation. Let's jump uh, real quick. Oh, there's one more mode here for drivers. Drivers being, you know, allowing you to control the value of any property uh, via something else. So perhaps controlling uh, the, let's just go over here. You can control the location or rot rotation by say an object's location. So if you just right click, you can add a driver and then you can go and customize what that driver does and how it works. Uh, but that's something for another day. So jumping back over to the dope sheet, dope sheet has basically the same breakdown where we can see all of our individual channels and objects here, uh, all of our individual keyframes. You can see that we have different keyframe types just as a visual marking. If you select a single keyframe by right clicking on it, and press the R key, you can change the keyframe type between keyframe, breakdown, extreme, and jitter. And this does nothing more than change the color. So if I set this you know, to breakdown or to extreme, we can obviously see what it does. Keyframe goes back. Uh, we've got all of our different keyframes. If we have the line in between the two, this just simply means that there is no, uh, or that each of these keyframes are exactly the same and that there's no difference within that one channel between the two keyframes. You can also see that this is a hierarchy view where we have our dope sheet summary here. So if I select the dope sheet summary for this frame, it's gonna select all the keyframes on that frame, allowing us to very easily select down. If you don't wanna show the summary, you can simply disable it like so. And then we have the same basic visibility controls as the graph editor. Now, one other thing that I didn't show you on the graph editor yet is how to change the actual interpolation type of the individual points. So if I go in here, select a single single point, you can see it then gives me my handles. And if I then hit V, I can set the keyframe handle type between each of our various modes. You can also find these via the key menu here for interpolation and handle type, um, cleaning keyframes, smoothing keys, sampling, baking, etc. It gives you all your controls in there. Uh, and then the last editor is the NLA editor for our nonlinear actions or nonlinear animation for you know basically doing animation clips. Now I'm not gonna worry about covering any of this at all, uh, but it's there if you wanna use it. And many of the animation clips, by the way, uh, first of all, you can enable this specific action by first unfreezing it, and then you can see your clip here. And then if you hit N to bring up the properties panel, you can then find all your blending modes, extrapolation, and things like that within this panel. Closing that, we'll then hide it again. So those are our different animation editors. Um, pretty much most of the things that you'll need. And that's about it for this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next video.